All right, class. First off, as always, good day. I'm glad you're here. Um, I do apologize for the tardiness of this video. Again, I've got a lot going on, and uh, I told you guys I would start making these videos, so here they are. Okay. So today's lesson, we're going to be looking at basically the beginning and the end of the American Revolution. Okay. Now, the thing is, I want to let you know, just like I did in class. This is everything in the American Revolution. There are plenty of things and events and people and uh, just things that were really, really interesting that I could not put on this um, this lecture uh, because it's so much. It's actually too much. And uh, if you really want to learn about it, there's plenty of documentaries. There's plenty of books, um, even some movies. Notice I said some movies have some historical accuracies um but some take liberty and just make it hollywood style and things like that okay but again if you really are interested there's plenty of stuff especially documentaries okay so here we are so the objective today we're going to analyze the events leading to america's independence we're going to critique the matchup between the colonies and the british and then we're going to develop a logical argument on which advantage was the greatest help to the colonies. So, right, so let's go ahead and go to your warm-up. All right, so here it is, okay? The first question asks you to analyze the picture and basically, what do you think this artist is trying to say? All right, now if you look at the bottom, there's a quote. I even put on the paper to read the quote. Um, that should really help you out again. If you can't see it, uh, if you can't read it, um, you know, because it's too small, let me read it for you. It says, I keep thinking we should include something in the Constitution in case the people elect a complete moron. So what do you think this artist is trying to say? The second question asks you, do you think this is something the founding fathers actually thought about when they were basically coming up? With the notion of our country and the laws and things like that and how it should run do you think they ever thought man maybe in the future people might actually not take the voting process seriously and might like you know vote in like a complete idiot uh so, you know just as a, as a joke let's put in somebody who shouldn't deserve to be there do you think they, that thought ever crossed their minds or you think they were like no no American people will always take the voting process seriously and nothing like this could ever happen. All right, so what do you think? Right, so pause the video, write your response, okay? Because we're moving on in three, two, one. All right, so just in case you forgot, the last lesson we were talking about the Battle of Lexington and Concord um, where the British were trying to get the ammunition and gun in Concord, um, but the militia fought them off and then the British retreated and the militia was like, yeah, we beat the biggest, baddest army in the world. And people started signing up for the militia. George Washington agreed to lead them, All right? Okay, so that's where we're at to this point now, okay? The militia's together, Washington's leading them. And like one of the major events that happened at the beginning was the Battle of Bunker Hill, which is quite literally a hill. The militia have control of it. They're up on top. The British start marching. You know, they're in their single file line. They're marching. And the militia is like, oh, this is fish in a barrel. They're coming right at us. So they're just aiming down and they're shooting. Bah, bah, bah. British soldiers are falling left, right, you know, but they keep marching, you know, marching, marching. And there's another advancement of British soldiers. So the American, the, the militia is like, well, hey, we're running out of ammunition. You know, let's wait till they get closer. Because remember, these bullets are not like they are now, where it's very, it can go straight. These bullets were round. Um, they were made sometimes like the night before. So they weren't really perfectly sphere. Sometimes if they were crooked a little bit and a good wind came in, it could take that bullet elsewhere. Um, so they waited till they got closer and then, you know, shot them to make sure that they actually hit their target. Um, they still did that and the British still marched and the militia had to retreat. 
Not because they were scared, but because they ran out of ammunition. They ran out of bullets. You know, the British did not stop. They kept coming. Just bam, bam, bam. So July 5th, 1775, um, the Continental Congress wrote a letter and it got to Britain on that day. Basically, in this letter, uh, the Continental Congress basically told King George III, hey, look it. We'll stay loyal to you, okay? But your policies, your laws, your taxes, they're too much. You know, we don't hate you as a person. We don't, okay? We'll remain loyal to you, the king. But your laws, your taxes, they, they need to ease up on us. You know, we need a representative in Britain. You know, it's nothing personal. It's just, you're, you're just straining us too much. You know, ease off just a little bit. So the king... He has been given the letter saying this is from the colonists. He doesn't even read it. He just tears up that letter. And he declares the colonies as enemies of Britain. All right. This is one of those things, uh, times in history where things might have changed if someone had done something. In this case, if King George III had actually read the letter, who knows? Maybe we would still be British. Maybe he would have been like, you know what? Sounds good. I'll ease up on the taxes, ease up on the, you know, the punishments and things like that. Give them a representative, you know, made them happy. Who knows? We would probably still be Britain, British. Who knows? We never know. But this is one of those things that once he tore it up, we are now on a path to war and independence. Okay. January 1776, this guy Thomas Paine writes that book you see right there. That is the original uh, common sense, right? Now, this book is basically a book saying how um, Parliament, the British, for the colonists. These laws and taxes and things like that. You know, and a lot of British people are reading this like, you know what? If I was one of those colonists and I'm experiencing this, what they're experiencing, I would be upset too. I would want independence. I would be upset that I have no represent representatives, uh, that these all these taxes and all these laws are just hindering on them. So this kind of persuades some British people to be like, you know what, maybe we shouldn't go to war. Maybe we should just give them their independence, you know, or ease up on them. So, you guys should know this date, July 4th, 7th. Colonists officially declare independence from Britain. That is what we call that document right there, the Declaration of Independence. All right, now this is when the Revolutionary War officially starts. Why? Because we have made our uh, declaration clear and we have announced it to the world. We are independent. We are no longer part of Britain. And this is the start of war. And how do we do that? You have to go to war. You have to win your independence. Um, so our third president, Thomas Jefferson, wrote this out. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but I love boxing. I love MMA. And one of my favorite things to do is right before the fight, they always put the tail of the tape. You know, who's much these guys, how old they are, um, their body weight, you know, their arm length and things like that. And I like to look at that stuff. You know, see who has the advantage. Now, in this case, I did this for you. I put the four advantages that British had and the four. Okay, let's look at the British side first. The first advantage that the British had was that their army was large. Okay, for being an island, not that big of an island, um, they had a massive army, a huge army. The other thing is, because they conquered a lot of places, they got a lot of money. Jewels and gold and silver and things like that. So they were well funded. So if they needed another cannon, no problem. They need another ship, awesome. We'll get one for you. Okay, they had plenty of money to spare around. And just like I said during the Bunker Hill incident, they are very disciplined. 
somebody gets shot next to them, their buddy, they're still marching. You know, they can get blood on their face and, you know, cannonball coming and looks like they're going to hit them. They are still marching. These guys are, again, at that time, one of the greatest armies in the world. And they're very well disciplined, mainly because the last thing, the last key thing is they're very experienced. Some of these soldiers have fought in the jungle, in the desert, in rain, in in snow, in different, all climates. You know, they know how to fight. You know, and they, they're good. They are just good. Okay. Now, let's look at the American side. The first advantage is they had home turf. Okay. Um, yeah, the British might have no, know how to fight on the sands and the in the jungle and things like that, but the Americans know that territory like the back of their hands. Why? Because they lived there all their life. You know, like I gave the example: if someone from LA tried, you guys would know where to how to get somewhere fast. You know, what's the quickest place to get from here to there? You know, and with that GPS, you know, that people from LA, they would need the GPS. They would know, I need to know how to get to Shaw, Blackstone, things like that. You know, you, you guys, you know how to do that kind of stuff. You know where to go. If you, if you're taking a bus, you know what bus route to take, you know? So that's an advantage. The other one is that the Americans had the local militia. Remember, militia are citizen, citizen soldiers. And these guys, they didn't fight the same tactics as the British. You know, the British were used to marching, you know, straight line in the middle of a, you know, field and things like that. Um, these militia guys had no problem hiding behind rocks, trees, you know, set up ambushes, use the terrain to, you know, to their advantage. Um... And the British were not used to that. We know now that's called like guerrilla tactics, you know, but the British weren't really used to that. They're used to fighting toe to toe in a line and things like that. The other advantage, not every British citizen felt the war was necessary. They felt it wasn't like worth it. Again, part of it was that book by Thomas Paine. Uh, so they were like, yeah, I don't think we should be in that war. Let's just give it to them. So not every British person supported the war. The last one is that the British were actually fighting three other countries at the same time they were fighting us. All right. So as they were fighting us, they were also fighting the French, the Spanish, and the Dutch. So they're, they're spread out. And if they needed reinforcement at either one of these places, it might take a while for help to come to it. You know, so, yeah, even though the army was large, they're spread out thin. Okay. So here's your first question. Which of the four advantages the colonies had do you think is the most important? Okay. Do you think it was the home turf? Do you think it was the militia using different tactics and fighting? Uh, do you think it was that the some British citizens didn't support the war? Or do you think it was because the British Army was stretched out thin? All right. Which one do you feel was the most important? And there's a writing prompt on the bottom to help you out. I believe the most important advantage the colonies had was what? Because, and be sure to put the expl explanation why you felt that one was the biggest advantage. Okay. So, um, think about it. Write it down. Pause the video. Because we're moving on in three, two, one. All right. So early on in the war, the British are kicking our butts. I mean, it's not even fair. They're just knocking us around left and right. Um, it gets to the point that some Americans, you know, at the beginning they were hyped up. Yeah, yeah, we're ready. We're ready. We. We fought at the Battle of Lexington Concord. We could have taken Bunker Hill. We could have won Bunker Hill, but we ran out of bullets. We could take on the British. And as time went on, they were just feeling lower and lower and lower. The morale is pretty low. Now, Christmas Day, I should say Christmas night, actually, 
1776, Washington crosses the Delaware River from Pennsylvania to New Jersey with 2,400 men. He basically does a sneak attack, and that's where that famous picture comes in. Excuse me. Sorry about that. And uh, they kept the capture the British by surprise and win the battle. Now, there's this general named Howe. He's the British leader, right? Well, one of the British leaders, I should say. And he, it just dawns on him. Why go toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys? Why fight like that? If you really want to hit the, strike the, your enemy where it hurts, you go for their heart. And what is the heart of our new country? The Continental Congress. And where are they at? They're in Philadelphia, which is our capital at the time. So his plan is to go to Philadelphia, capture the Continental Congress, basically hold them for ransom, and basically tell the army, stand down, all right, sign this treaty to end the war. You guys are still part of Britain, things like that. Okay? So he's making his way. But George Washington and his men hear about this. So they basically cut off Howe, and they start fighting, right? Now, Howe thinks this is the... A battle going on but really it's a distraction washington basically has some men in philadelphia going to the continental congress people telling them hey you and your family need to get out all right the british are right outside they're gonna try to capture you guys you need to go so they basically scatter like cockroaches when the light comes on they're they're gone out of philadelphia when washington gets word hey they're all gone it's safe washington's men they're gone too. So Hal's like, ha, see, we got them. They're scared of us. And he continues into Philadelphia, and the Continental Congress is gone. Okay. Now, <laughs> this one's pretty funny. October 17th, 1777, the Continental Army captures 5,000 British soldiers coming from Quebec as reinforcements. Uh, they capture them without firing a shot. Now, how did they do this? Basically, it's like this. Here's a terrain, right? There's mountains, mountains, and a little valley to walk through. The British are coming through, right down the middle. The Americans cut them off here and cut them off on the back. And then they come out of the mountains and aiming their guns at them. They capture them. They set up a little trap. So they capture 5,000 of the best soldiers in the world without firing a single shot. Now, once this is heard by the French, the French people are like, you know what? These Americans might actually win this war. There's a possibility. They just need a little help. You know what? Maybe we should help them. And this convinces the French to help out America with not only soldiers, but ships and money. So here is question number two. Do you think France decided to help the colonists because they believed, hey, they should have freedom, they should be independent? Or do you think they did it because they wanted revenge, you know, because they lost in the French and Indian War to the British. So you think they did it because, hey, these guys deserve freedom, you know? Or do you think they did it because, hey, they want revenge on the British? So what do you think? What do you believe? All right, and if you have a different idea of why the French might be wanting to help us, let me know. Write that down, okay? You don't have to stick to those two options. If you can think of something else, write it out, all right? So I didn't write a writing prompt on the bottom because I want to see you guys start your own sentence the correct way. Let's see if you guys can do it. I know you can. Let's see you do it. Okay. So pause the video, write your response because we're moving on in three, two, one. So the British are getting beat in the north. So now they're like, let's focus on the south. All right. So May 8th. 1780, General Charles Cornwallis captures 5,000 soldiers in Charleston, South Carolina. Now, Cornwallis is, at that time, a very smart general. 
I mean, he knows tactics. He knows warfare better than just about almost anyone at that time. Okay, he's a very smart man when it comes to war. Okay, October 7, 1780, at the Battle of the Kings, the American troops actually forced the British out of the South. So you got the British losing in the South. You got them losing from the North. So now they're getting squeezed. And on October 19th, at the Battle of Yorktown, Cornwallis and 8,000 British troops are trapped and surrounded, and basically surrounded in Yorktown. You got American and French soldiers on land. You got French ships out in the sea, and they're getting bombed in Yorktown from both sides, you know. So Cornwallis surrenders. Now, again, Cornwallis is no joke. He's not just some rookie general. This guy is an amazing general, well-respected, and everyone knows he knows his stuff. So when Parliament the British Congress finds out that he surrendered, they're like, okay, you know what? Let's end this war. This is ridiculous. If they capture Cornwallis, they beat him. Yeah, it's over. So peace talks begin in April 1782. And if you look at the date right here, the Treaty of Paris is officially signed September 3rd, 1783. So over a year Basically, like, almost a year and a half, peace talks goes on and on and on about what territory they get, who gets what, this and that. So the United States is officially recognized as a free nation. Now, Britain, they lost the war, so they have to give things up. And the French are just ear-to-ear -ear smiles, and they're just happy as a clam because, again, they wanted revenge, you know. Nothing makes them happier than seeing the British lose. So they made Britain give back Florida to Spain because that's what they took from Spain in the French and Indian War. They also had to make concessions to France, meaning they had to give up land, they had to give up, you know, uh, territories, you know, that it's not in the Americas, and they also had to pay them. So, yeah, the French really stuck it to the British. Well, that's the end of this lesson. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, you guys, um, you take care, you be safe, and I'll see you guys later, okay?